It's a rainy night in Sullivan County, Tennessee. Yeah, we have to go ahead and show me out here once they sign it, grab that limit. Two cars involved in a collision with each other, possible injuries. People will drive on dry roads for so long that when it gets wet, they kind of forget that it gets slick. There's a lot more crashes. We're getting close. County, Tennessee, Deputy Travis Jackson commands the scene of a horrific accident. Where's the other people? Other people down in the Chief down the hill. Were y'all involved? Yeah. So what happened? Y'all just we went to break to turn and then also boom. Got hit in the rear end. This gentleman he's gonna check you out. Are you hurting where? My back's hurting, but her head, she went all the way forward and snapped okay. all the way back. I saw her head going forward. So okay. Both of you working seat belts? Yeah. They're complaining of injuries. They're going to be checked out by EMS right now. Vehicle 1, which is the Jeep, pulled up to stop and make a left turn on the side street. And apparently this vehicle was coming out there, didn't see it, and rear-ended it. You can look at the damage, and the damage corroborates that story. You guys are okay? I think so. Uh, you're almost home. I understand. Everybody seems okay. Nobody's getting transported. Once the women whose vehicle was rear-ended leave the scene, Deputy Jackson questions the driver who allegedly caused the accident. Are you okay? I know you're upset right now. I'm just going to ask you about what happened. I looked up for two seconds to change the song on my phone, and I looked back up, and they were stopped. And I tried to stop them, but of course, they didn't think this was great. All I can remember is just smashing into them, and they just got it. I finally had it for two reasons, and I think it's just one of them. Oh, for real? Oh, for Things happen. Trust me, this is not the end of the world type thing. And think about it like this, it could be a whole bunch worse. The most important thing is that you're okay. Take care, okay? Right now it's a high stress situation. She's just acting in the moment. But she has time to think about it and relax a little bit. She's, trust me, she's gonna be thankful that everything happened the way it did. You can see it's pretty extensive damage and for no, nobody to be hurt, that's a that's a good night. We got your way, man. Works for me. Thank you. As the rain wears on in Sullivan County, 70 miles through the mountains in Ash County, North Carolina, Sergeant Aaron Reed responds to a report of a violent family incident. Right now we're going to a domestic call. Initially came out as a uh, assault had occurred. Somebody had been slapped. They called back and said that the male subject had assaulted somebody with a hammer. So now we're running emergency traffic because we do have a subject with a hammer. Apparently there's several family members involved. The male subject has a hammer. It's an elderly man possibly with dementia. We may not understand what's going on. Something about the situation may just have him scared. Me and my brother was arguing, and then um, my mom was trying to keep my dad out of the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And then he pushed her through the door and came in there and then took, held off, punched me really hard in the back of my head, and then kicked me in the hip. And I walked across the porch trying to get away from him, and he kept trying to punch me in the face. So I picked up the hammer to make him back away, and he wouldn't back away from me. And he grabbed my arm really hard and tried to break it and take the hammer out of my Are you bruised anywhere? Anything I'm bleeding? Not bruised. But, uh, Where did you say he kicked you? He kicked me right here in the hip. Okay, do you think you're raised on the hip? No, I look. Okay, what's your relation? He's my stepdad. He's your stepdad? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is this your mom? Yeah, it is. He also shoved her uh, mm -hmm. in the other bed and then shoved her on the porch when he was, she was trying to get him off of me. Okay. What happened from your perspective? I got in between them and I put her in the bedroom and shut the door. And my husband came at me and pushed mm -hmm. me out of the way and opened the door and come in. He slung me on the bed and come after her. Okay. If y'all could stay right here for me, let me go ahead and talk to the other deputy. 
Deputy Tony Blevins has already questioned the alleged victim's stepfather, Leroy Rash, and her sibling, Jesse. The young boy, a 16-year-old, is fighting with her. He's got marks on his arm. Where would they come from? From her. He's got marks on him. Visible? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's on his arm, you know. It's his brother and sister fighting, but you see what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll do one. We'll do one. We'll do one. We'll do one. Yeah. How are you? Are you hurt anywhere? No. You're okay? I'm fine. All right. Uh, it's a wonder my fist thanks for because I hit Rachel in the back of the head because she kept on and on and on. Sure. I was trying to get her in the mouth and she turned her head. You're going to go to jail. Stand up. Turn around and put your hands. Wait, 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 wait a minute. No, we're not so, waiting. Let me explain. You're going to go wait if you don't move your hands. Jesse, quit. Leave the officers alone. Just turn around and put your hands in your back. Right, if you're not going to give any trouble, we put them on the ground. Okay. okay. We're going to be there. We're going to hurt you. Well, you better watch my fist because it hits you. Well, don't do that. I'm going to hurt you if you do that. I'm going to ride a rescue. The state law says if you punch your family member in the face, we have to take you. We'll walk on down the car. You can sit down. I don't want you to touch his medicine. Yes. Okay. We can take it off. Jesse, you can push if you want. <laughs> All right. Just sit tight right there. Can I have some air? Yeah, I'll crack the window for you. After Leroy Rash sees a judge, bond will be set. And if paid, he will be able to return home. The officers suspect they haven't seen the last of Leroy and his family. Justice is served in Ash County. Two hours away in Sullivan County, Tennessee, Deputy Brad Lawson is on a routine patrol when he receives a rousing call from Deputy Burke Murray. Hello. Go get what? Oh. Oh. Nice. You just made my day. I love you. The officers have just received a tip about the potential whereabouts of two fugitives. Gloves and the glasses are coming on. You know what we're getting ready to do? We're going after two people. One of us wanted less. Supposedly living in a tent. A local couple, husband and wife Logan and Rose Weedy, has been on the run from the law for about a I'm year. I'm excited about this. Like somebody standing in line on Black Friday for towels at Walmart. No. <laughs> Deputies Lawson and Murray rendezvous in a nearby parking lot. Hey, Looks like he's about to turn left from the <laughs> <laughs> What's the guy and kids up there? No, we went and looked. The parents got the kids. We talked to talk the house where they're supposed to be two or three times. The mom keeps the issue on where they're at. Somebody finally called in on it. Ten folks. Ten folks. Perfect day to do it. Good rain. Yeah, I know exactly what one. <laughs> Wanted. They have a house, but they've been hiding out in the tent in the woods, so we're going to see if they're there. You don't know if they got weapons in that tent, how hidden they are back in there, like if they got it set up. Maybe they're on a little hill they can see it's coming, so they'd have the advantage, you know. You don't know what their demeanor is. They could be one of them people like, oh, I'm not going to jail. I'm going to do anything I can to stay out of jail. I'm recording now. Deputies carefully proceed down the path by the river, staying alert for anything. This could be the perfect hiding place for the husband and wife fugitives who may be armed. What's unpredictable about those situations is usually the person we're going to make contact knows that area well. They're heavily camouflaged. They usually see you coming before you can locate them. They have the advantage, so you have to approach with caution as much as you can.
Sullivan County, Tennessee, deputies Burke Murray and Brad Lawson have received a tip that two of the region's most wanted fugitives, husband and wife Logan and Rose Leedy, are hiding in a wooded area down by the river. The Leedy's are wanted for a series of thefts it's locked. and have been on the lam for about a year. The officers close in on an abandoned building where they suspect the couple has taken refuge. With the small building proving to be a bust, the deputies press on deeper into the woods. Goes way back in here. Deputy Lawson's years of experience tell him they're on the right track. If I was hiding out, I wouldn't be at the front. I'd be way back here. This would be the spot if somebody was hiding out. Deputy Lawson's suspicions seem to be confirmed. It looks like a big fire pit. I guarantee you this is it. Nope. We're not here now. With the trail cold and soggy, the deputies wrap up their search for the time being. I said it was good info at one time, but with all this rain, I say they've moved off. So as long as they don't know that we know this, they'll, uh, they'll come back. All right, we'll keep checking. It's supposed to be nice this weekend. <laughs> It's been raining for about three days, heavy, steady. Eventually, hopefully, we'll catch up to them. As the hunt for Rose and Logan Leedy continues, elsewhere in Sullivan County, another team of officers is out to serve a warrant on a fugitive believed to be staying with his family. This family, they always have warrants. We've had dealings with them before. They always stay the same place, and it's their mom's house. So typically, they're very resistant. They don't want nobody to come in the residence. They've been doing it for a little while. They're used to the game, so hopefully they'll be here when we get up here. Patrick Hansen ran from officers the last time they tried to arrest him. So this time, they're taking no chances. Deputies rush to cover the back of the house, while Poff and Jackson approach the front. Lines. It's been over, man. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you doing, boss? Hey, not too bad. Is uh, Patrick in there? Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Can you come here and talk to us? Okay. Yes. Thank you. That's easier than I thought. Several minutes pass and no one returns to the door. The officers continue scanning the property, looking for any signs of Patrick. Welcome to him again. Hi, it's my house. Where's Patrick at? I don't know, he's not here. And he just, what do you need? You know, you know the game, we're not doing this over and over again. He already said he's here. He has no, he warrant. said he would check. He, that's Patrick's dad. No, I said, I said, is Patrick here? He said yes. I said, will you go get him? He said yes. No, let me check. I don't shut the door again. I, no, I have dogs up and bite. I'm well, not just leave your crying. Okay. Here, cracks. I'll, I'll, I'll well, trust you all. Hold it or they will get out we'll, take the, we'll take the dog to a room and put it in the room. I, I can't do that. I have three of them. As the woman steps back inside, someone else approaches the door. Matt, don't shut the door. She door. doesn't want you crossing the threshold. Open the door. Thank you, well, we want this door closed. We got a warrant. Have an arrest warrant? Yes, we do. Yeah, we'll there's this address on it. If we have a right to search, and I don't want y'all shutting the door. No, you don't. Just because we open the door doesn't allow you in here. And you know that. Yes, it does. How? You don't, because we, 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 you don't have reasonable doubt to believe he's here. Well, we got a warrant, like I said, to be in this residence to look for Patrick. Officer Jackson, come on up here. I'm just telling you the truth. Not my house. So, I, whoever's I'm house it is. You out or not. Where's your mom at? She's back here probably behind Patrick. Mom, you need to come here. But he's got his foot wedged in the door. He's got a arrest warrant, but they don't know if he's here or not. Okay. Well, what do you want to do here? Can't we go out on the lower level? 
the deputies and Patrick's family are in a good old-fashioned Tennessee standoff. In Sullivan County, Tennessee, deputies are in a standoff. They've come to arrest Patrick Henson, but his family is stonewalling them. We've got an arrest warrant, but they don't know if he's here or not. Okay. Well, what do you want to do here? It's booked in the door. Never got out on the low level. If she's a homeowner, she needs to come to the door and talk to us. Matt. Yeah, I'm, I don't want to. She's the homeowner, so she needs to come. There he is. Finally. Patrick comes to the front door. No problem, I, was, I was getting ready to see my daughter, man. Yeah, I could have came three hours later. I would have came. He's coming to see his daughter. We haven't seen in two weeks since we were in the car. Man, could we not no do more. No more time. I mean, honestly, because we could take you to jail. So, I mean, for saying he wasn't in there. So. I was just going to see my daughter. I didn't daughter. say that. I said I'd see No more time. No. Let's go. same thing they always do don't want to let you in wanting to say he's not there can't prove that he's there so they think if you can't prove they're there that you can't come in they think they're lawyers basically so ended up you know stayed there long enough eventually uh patrick just came on out so luckily we didn't have to force our way in because that would have been the next step we were just being courteous giving them the time to let him come out instead of us having to go in and get him but this isn't Deputy Poff's first encounter with Patrick. Poff knows me. All too well. I went to school with Poff. He's on high. Yeah. 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 So I took that sweet whiskey once I knew he was good. It was a long day in Brooklyn. About 10 minutes, I was going to see my daughter for a fifth birthday. So it's kind of like, damn, man, if y'all would give me five more hours, I would have showed up here. All right, I'm just going around the corner. I'll get to the left. Once someone posts bail for Patrick, he will be free to leave. My bond's 500, so I owe you 50. You know, my dad will pay it when you pay it when you get there. Appreciate you. As Patrick waits to be bailed out of jail, over in Ash County, North Carolina, a report of a domestic emergency comes in from a family that officers have visited all too often. Deputy Jeremy Monday races to the home of Leroy Rash, the same man who was arrested for striking his stepdaughter. This time, the disturbance involves Leroy's daughter, Melissa. Just got a call to a domestic situation. Apparently, it's a dementia patient, and the daughter's trying to get the dementia patient out of the house. Probably really not a domestic. It's just they're trying to do the right thing for him. But we're going to go out here and check and make sure. Deputy Monday is joined by Sergeant Daryl McClure. Uh, what's going on? He has five yeah, stuff and Melissa's in there trying to get him to leave with her. No, she's messed up on business. She thinks uh, she can take him out of here. She don't live here, does she? Who lives here? Yeah. Do you want her here? No, I don't. I'm not okay. going to leave her alone. What's going on? <laughs> Just a minute. He's in there pretty bad. He's got the mask. He's got the mask. He's got the mask. The stress is really getting the best of him. So, I've agreed to take him with me, get him in a hotel room, get him a break, and she don't want him to go. I'm absolutely sure if I keep on living here with her that I'm going to pass away or mm -hmm. from being stressed out and tormented so much. I mean, I've got, got their side. I'm not going to lie to you. She's probably going to tell you I'm not going to stay with him, but I'm going to rent him a hotel. And I've got plenty of Well, here, here's the bottom line. He stays here. And she don't want you here. And she don't right. want you here. And she said he's not going anywhere. Now, is she your caretaker? You, you can carry yourself? She's got power of attorney? Well, or there's, no power. there's no power of attorney. She's not going to stay with my wife. She don't want to be your neighbor. And you're forcing me to I'm stay. I'm not forcing you to stay anywhere. You, you feel free to leave anytime you okay. want to. Well, I want to leave with her. Good God, what's wrong with y'all? 
This is what we're trying to say. You can't be on a property. But if you were so happy to drive down the road and you see your dad there walking, get him in the car and take him. Hey, sir, you're free to leave if you want to go. But make sure you get your clothes and your medication. You have to have your medication. Sir, okay. and it's raining out here. You might need to get a jacket now. He's wanting to leave like that. Let him leave like that. Uh, he needs to go. He's a going. If you are going with him. He's ready to go. Uh -huh. He's got to have his medicine if he goes anywhere. You can't deny him his medicine. He is his own person, so he can leave at his own free will. Just like you, if you wanted to leave, you could leave. He has just as much right to his car and his medication as you do. Well, since neither Melissa nor her father Leroy can legally drive, yeah, I know you have driver's license. A family friend volunteers to give them a ride to a motel. Meanwhile, Leroy's son Jesse tries to convince his father and Melissa not to drive away. When they refuse to get out of the car, Jesse kicks the vehicle in anger. Melissa races from the scene. Now, whatever help he needs, I don't know. I'm not being here, but you do. She's the man's right. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Sorry. 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 Sorry.
I stopped friends to get him taken care of. I wouldn't put him in a situation. Later that afternoon, Melissa and Leroy are safely transported to a motel. I don't see how you can take care of somebody that's sick when you ain't got a home yourself. My concern with everything is his daughter, she's an pill user. So there's a good possibility that's why she come to get him is because of all the medications that he has. I hope that she don't steal them or sell them, but they're taking him to a hotel right now. And what happens to him from there, it'll be hard to say, but he's going to be a whole lot happier. So that's all we can do. A family crisis put on hold in Ash County. As day turns to night, over in Sullivan County, another drama is about to unfold. Deputy Richard Lingerfeld is cruising the highway when he spots a car pull into an empty parking lot and shut off its lights. Lingerfeld turns around to investigate. Car pulled over in that store parking lot back there that's closed. And he pulled over there and cut his headlights off. So I just making sure that he see me turn around so he's leaving which way he goes the driver has apparently seen the deputy and wants nothing to do with him up ahead the car has ducked off the highway so Lingerfeld turns down the same road and gives chase suspicious when he see me. He pulled out and then he turned on his side of the road and I think he blacked out on me. I don't know where he went. Yeah, he blacked out. I don't know where he went to. I'm going to backtrack to see if he pulls out. He was hiding for something. What that is, Deputy Lingerfeld intends to find out as he scours the darkness for any sign of a missing vehicle and its driver. Sullivan County, Tennessee, Deputy Richard Lingerfeld is in a game of cat and mouse with a mysterious motorist. The driver has ducked off the highway onto a small side road and cut the headlights to avoid being seen. Moments later, something catches the deputy's eye. Bingo. Lingerfeld spots the car parked halfway down a driveway with its lights off. Hello. Howdy. I'm Slim from the Sheriff's Office. Um, the reason I pulled in behind you, I seen you pulled in and the store over there, and then you cut your lights off, and then when I turned around, you Watch put your lights on and pulled out. And I was doing, I, I was texting, and I didn't yeah, want to drive. Right. Do a lot of right there at the store. Okay, um, you live here? No, sir. Okay, why did you pull in this driveway then? Because I didn't know what was going on. I was just scared. Like I said, I pulled in there to text, and I didn't want to drive and text. I, I, I appreciate that. I mean, that's, that's good. Yeah. Do you, you see what I'm saying, though? You know, it kind of looked, when I turned around, you pulled out real quick, but you hadn't turned your headlights on, and but you right. pulled in this driveway. Have you been drinking anything tonight? Just a little bit. Okay, how much have you had to drink? Probably, it's been about maybe two hours since I had a beer. Now that all you had one beer? Maybe two. Maybe two? Yeah. Have you ever uh, had any DUIs or anything? I had one probably when I was 19, and I'm 57. And that's the last time I had any trouble. Well, you wouldn't do a couple of tests for me? Yes, yes, sir. And, and I'll just tell you, I, I had a couple of buddies of mine came in from out of town. I had high school friends. I hadn't seen 15 or 20 years. I hadn't had anything to drink but ice water for at least three or four hours. If you will, step out of the car for me. Now, on my 
pen. I want you to fall with your eyes only. Don't right. fall with your head. Just drive. The deputy conducts a series of standard sobriety tests. One, two, three. Right now, I think that you've had a little bit more than what you say you've had. Um, you're a little bit too impaired, in my opinion, to be driving. You're being placed under arrest, but I'm going to help you out a little bit. Have you got somebody that can come get your vehicle? Uh, I'm calling my brother. Okay. Hey, man. Um, I'm out here, and I've been arrested for um, probably having too much to drink, but uh, I need you to come pick up my car if you can. Yeah, I'll be right there. I right, appreciate it. No All right, bye bye. Bye bye. Just have to sit there and get your hand just say. Driving while uh, you've had a little bit too much to drink with your friends that you haven't seen in a while. There's a line there you shouldn't cross. And unfortunately, he crossed it. As Deputy Lingerfeld finishes processing this DUI case. In another part of the county, Deputy Travis Jackson has just received a tip on the possible whereabouts of a couple on the most wanted list, Logan and Rose Leedy. The Leedys are wanted for a string of thefts and have avoided capture for more than a year. We got a, a vague description on where Logan and Rose Leedy may be. They're staying with a couple. We were able to confirm an apartment complex in which we went to last night, and they wouldn't come to the door, but we knew they were inside. So we're going to go up here, and if we can confirm that they're inside and that they're just not coming to the door, then we can force entry and go in and effect the arrest. Deputy Jackson meets up with deputies Woods and Barrett to discuss a plan of action. We're going to go in blacked out. We're going to park down in front of it, sneak up to it, see, see what we can hear, and go from there. And then we can take it a step further. Ready? Yeah. We're right down from the apartments now, so we're getting ready to shut it down and go dark, go in covert. Twenty nine, twenty seven, that vehicle here, three ninety four, right past DBT. Is it this? No, it's the ones back in here. Just watch yourself. Just be careful about the gravel when you step. Just be able to take the car. Deputy Jackson takes his position outside the front door. He can hear several people talking inside the apartment. Trying to get our power turned off, and he keeps spending money. I said I was not going to break into this $200 no matter what. Now I have to. While listening for evidence that the ladies are inside, Jackson overhears talk about other potential criminal activity. I'm not sure you I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. I don't give a my Deputy Jackson is convinced his fugitives are inside and decides the time to strike is now. Sheriff's office. Jackson and his team have staked out an apartment in Sullivan County where they suspect fugitives Logan and Rose Leedy are hiding out. I'm sick of that. From the sounds of things, there is criminal activity involving pills going on behind closed doors. I don't give a my Deputy Jackson decides to take action. Who is that? Sheriff's office. Sheriff's office. Um, me and my fiance and uh, Amanda and uh, Rose and 
Who are you looking Logan for? Logan and Rose here. Is that who you're looking for? Where are they at? Give me just a second because they are with turning their stuff in. They were getting ready. Let me, let me step in here. You can step right in. Step right here. Which room are they in? Listen, Logan, here. Listen. Logan. Tell them to step out here and step out here Can now. Can you guys just step out, please? Where y'all at? Step over here, face away from him. I'm take sorry. Come here, here you go. Face away from him. You didn't get anything on you? Put your hands back, guys. We knew this was going to happen. We were waiting. They were waiting. Who else is here? Hey, Justin. Tell them I know he's getting rid of pills. I don't care about that. No, no. We ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Operate yeah. your own. See, operate your own. Everybody else, just sit down until we get everything else squared away and all that. I hate that. <laughs> But, I mean, when you get done, you know, I don't want to waste it. You don't have to worry about it. Like I said, he done paid it. I've never made it. I don't know. Nobody else is here? No. Okay, I'm just going to take a quick look, right? Before y'all knocked on the door, she said, I'm ready for my mug shot. She knew she was going. She said, I didn't want her to go. She was scared, but she said, I didn't want her to go. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. For this Bonnie and Clyde couple wanted for a string of thefts, their time on the run has come to an end. And their new life behind bars is just beginning. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to get out of here, but I do need to tell you, you know, we heard what y'all were talking about about the fields. We know what's going on with everything. We're not going to hit me up on that right now, but I'm telling you, from this point forward, if you don't want the charges, stop. If y'all have a problem with those fields, get help so you don't get in trouble and end up That's free. what um, we're trying to do, really. Yeah. Hopefully, we really okay. are. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just dropping your heads up. Tell Logan and them we love them. Tell them we're very sorry about this. I, I hope they get it done. You did. And that's the thing. If you hadn't, it, this was going a different route. So this went down the best way it could have tonight. So, all right. Thank you all. We could clearly hear people talking inside about all sorts of drugs and drug paraphernalia, the selling of drugs. So at that point, we make a decision to go ahead and knock on the door. The waiting is over. They knew that this was coming, and they were even preparing themselves for that. So they knew that uh, it was just a matter of time, and this was the time. We had other units uh, transport them to the jail, and we're going to go over here and answer the calls that are backing up. Yeah, I've been looking for them for a long time. I was hoping they would open the door so I could just, you know, catch them red-handed with the drugs. But that's why dude went to the bathroom is to flush his stash, which got rid of that. It's funny, like, when police come to the door, people have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> the year-long manhunt is finally over. It's a positive conclusion for the Sullivan County Sheriff's Office and a profound sense of relief for Logan and Rose Leedy. Pretty much, we went homeless there, what, about two years ago? Yeah. Uh, we started stealing for food, stealing to make money. We was living in our car for about six months uh, doing that. We got uh, kind of on drugs there for a little bit. And then everything was about getting drugs. Yeah, it seemed like it was the only thing that kind of helped. Um, yeah. But we uh, started detoxing there. We decided to quit. So we just pretty much been stealing to survive. And we ain't stolen over a year and a half, though. We've been going to church and stuff like that, trying to get our life straightened out, get our kids back. But I couldn't get a job with all oh, this right. on me, you know. Being We're really thankful that this actually happened. Yeah. Because we needed to get it behind us. We just didn't have the guts to come up here and do it. We've been running for too long, and we can't really have a life with our kids or with our parents or anything like that as long as we're, you know, most wanted, yeah. <laughs> so.